CZ. What the hell? CZ. Damn it. CZ. What the shit? CZ. What the fuck? Hi, Misha here, and based on that, I think you know how this video is going to go. But, a lot of people have asked, what about the Bryn 2 MS Carbine? So here we go. This is, of course, the version in 5.56.223. This is what we tend to prefer in the Bryn series, just because, for one, it's what the Czech military issues, and for another, Jay and I both have a number of guns in 760 by 39 Don't really need another. And, this is kind of a final clincher, the Bryn 2 MS in X39 takes proprietary mags. Now, am I blaming them for that? No, they, they really needed to do that. But, it does mean that you'd have to stock a new mag type. So, yeah, we prefer the 5.56. So, the Carbine. Well, let's get some good out of the way. And the best good on this gun is the stock, which is what everyone wants. I looked on Gunbroker before doing this video, and the only stock is over $500 on there. It clips to the side. You just pull it down slightly to unfold it. It hooks at the bottom of the brass deflector. has a notch. has a cheek riser piece here. It adjusts, although I don't know if I can do it single-handed. I think it has uh, four positions I counted, plus a rubber recoil pad. Stock has a QD sling pocket. One on each side. There's also a standard QD sling pocket and sling bar at the rear of the receiver. The uh, grip and mag housing is unchanged from the Bryn 2 S and MS we've seen before. And uh, this is the newer style of polymer CZ mag. So, yeah, the receiver is the same. The difference is. Okay, as I pointed out in the 2S versus 2MS video, the 2MS lacks the lightning cuts on the receiver on both sides, whereas the 2S has them. A bit more perplexing, the top of the 2MS, while it still has a pick rail, it's this dished in style. Whereas the 2S is just a standard straight pick rail. So those are the two major differences between 2S and 2MS. If you're interested, we have done a full comparison video. Now the 2S and 2MS have both come in 8 inch, 11 inch, and 14 inch pistol versions. And they're virtually identical in all three versions except for the obvious difference in barrel length. Except the 14 does have a bayonet lug. The 11 and the 8 do not because there's not really room for it. Otherwise they're the same. And what's nice about them the barrels on the Bryn, actually the 805 Bryn, and the Bryn 2, are pretty, I wouldn't call them quick change, but easy enough to change in the field. There's just a few screws. And they even provide you with the proper wrench in the tool maintenance kit that ships with these. So you can pull an 8 inch barrel out of a Bryn 2 pistol and put it and one that had a 14 or vice versa going back and forth and theoretically you can also switch calibers with uh, by removing the magwell insert and putting in the proper bolt and all that okay the carbine this handguard first what's underneath it and I'll break out the pistol I meant to really show you the gas system is extended on the carbine longer gas piston with the gas regulator pushed out more to the front. Also, strangely, the gas regulator settings are different than on the pistol. And based on the finish, I would suspect that the gas piston and gas valve may be 
some of the U.S. made parts for this. I would also suspect that this rail is U.S. made based on the finish. It has a different finish than on the receiver, slightly. It is alloy, which is nice, not heavy duty steel. So it's not super heavy. It is M-Lock compatible, but this is very much not a military rail. It is very civilian style. It may be functional, may be practical, but it's not military. I am at least thankful it doesn't go all the way out to the barrel. At least I would be if this wasn't the barrel we got. Okay, you have to have a 16 plus inch barrel on a carbine. Fair enough. But not only did they make it longer, they made it significantly, notably, heavier. And not just out front, but also under the handguard too, it's still quite heavy. I wouldn't call this a bull barrel, but if it were on an M4 carbine, you would probably call it a heavy barrel. Certainly a, a medium heavy contour at the very least. Now is it a high quality barrel? I'm, I'm sure. Is it made in the USA or the Czech Republic? I'd be interested to find that out myself. And at the end, we have the CZ muzzle brake. Not the flash hider that you found on the 2S and 2MS. This is the muzzle brake as found on the 805. Is it an effective muzzle brake? Yes. Does it look military? No way in hell. And, given that this is a 16-inch carbine, why? It also is a quite good loudener. If you're shooting under a shed or something, it will make some concussion for your neighbors. Now, it is on half by 28 threads, as you'd expect. And unlike the flash hider that comes on the pistol, it's fitted with a crush washer to time it properly. So what else? Well, I can tell you what we don't have. Every Bren before 805, pistol and carbine, and all the Bren 2 pistols have come with iron sights. Now, the 805 pistol had fixed iron sights, kind of like on it, well, pretty much the same ones used on the Scorpion, but the rest had quite nice folding sights. Very military, very durable, but not on the carbine. It does not have iron sights. Period. No sighting devices. Also, and let's flip this over. You can see the lack of lightning cuts better on this side. Here's the, the rear sling spots. But notice there's no front sling attachment. So if you want to put a sling on this, which you know I, I'm a fan of, you'll have to buy some kind of M-lock adapter or run some paracord through one of these vent holes, which is probably the ghetto tactic I would take if I were keeping this. But this is definitely not going to be a keeper. So why, why is that? Well, let's do a few comparisons. Here it is with my trusty pistol. This is the 11 inch version that I've told many times. The reason I kind of picked it is it was a good compromise. Not as compact as an 8, but also a little better shooting, a little less flip, a little better accuracy and range. But, compared to the 14, it is quite a bit shorter and a good bit lighter. Especially, I've noticed for me, overall weight doesn't seem to be as important as balance. A well-balanced gun can often feel a lot lighter than it really is. Conversely, an unbalanced gun even if it's on paper quite light, can feel unwieldy, heavy, and what have you. As you can see though, they're quite similar back here, but you can see that the gas systems are significantly different length. A couple of inches longer on the carbine. 
this has the original mag and I did confirm a couple of years ago that this is the mag at least originally issued with the two A1 and 2A2 to the Czech military they might have gone in more recent years to this newer style that we we're starting to see ship I'm not sure but that was originally what we have so flipping them back over redeploying the stock here it is in its fully extended position yeah, it's four positions. Took the mag out of mine so I can get them a little closer to show you the uh, systems here. They're quite different. In fact, the tip of the flash hider on this comes to about the edge of the uh, gas system, so pretty significant. And yeah, this is the three prong hider that. Uh, the military uses this is not and you can also see the profile of the barrel here notice how it steps up to meet the flash rider it continues to be quite thin under the handguard notice how this does not have any step up when it meets the flash rider Are the gas box enlarged? Hard to tell because so much of this gas block is hidden. There's certainly more of a step between barrel and gas block here. Whereas here it's almost flush. Yeah, the gas valves feel quite different. The way the markings are done are quite different on these. And so here is the original 2S handguard. It has two M-lock slots. So not a great bit of real estate, but considering these are meant to be quick-change barrels, or at least interchangeable with the 8-inch, you needed it this short to allow that. But still, two slots plus the full top rail gives you enough real estate for basics. When they did the 2MS pistol, they went to one M-lock slot, which was very odd decision. The good news is now we have what five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five on the carbine, so and that's on all sides, so you do have a lot more M lock. Of course this being a pistol, I have a folding SB tactical brace on it. This being a carbine, it has the original Bren 2 stock. And it does make disassembly a little bit different between the two. Interesting fact. I put this light mag, the Magpul copy CC mag in this gun, and threw it on the scale. Kitted out like this. Sights. Basic rail covers basic little DI red dot it weighed in right at seven pounds with all that stripped off which I didn't want to do just to weigh it for five seconds it's definitely under six and a half pounds maybe closer to six pounds five ounces anyway with everything put on it's about seven pounds reasonable for a kitted out gun in 2020 frankly and certainly lighter than the 805. So, I took this gun, put the mag in it, and weighed it just as you see it. Stock, but no sights, no optic, no rail attachments, no sling. It weighed 7 pounds, 8 ounces. So, 7.5 pounds naked versus seven pounds fully kitted out. That means if I were to take the stuff on this gun and put it on this gun, it would be eight pounds. Eight pounds. Now as I said, I am not terribly weight sensitive. I grew up shooting in one grands. However, 
This stock is quite light. This polymer housing is light. This alloy receiver is quite light. The bolt group is quite small, meaning most of your weight is out here. Yes, the heavy 16-inch barrel is the most of it. The muzzle brake is a little heavier than this flash rider. That adds a couple ounces. The thing is, the further out to the end you add ounces, the, the more I tend to feel them personally. You may be different. On top of that, we have a longer handguard. Again, it is lightweight, but it is still several inches of metal. We have a longer extended pick rail on top of that too. And we have a longer gas piston slash gas system. So the extra weight, which is at least a pound, is all forward of the magwell, which means in my hands, the balancing point tends to be mid handguard. Whereas with this gun, the balancing point tends to be right around the magwell, which is exactly where I do like it. But wait, it gets worse. Let's compare it to my 805 carbine. You know I was going to bring this out, right? I mean, I love this gun. This has been a bit of a project for me over the years since I picked it up in 2016. I have put on a correct 14 inch barrel, which is actually 14.2. And then to get to legal overall, I didn't want a SBR just for less than 2 inches. So I just uh, used a uh, threaded piece actually from a, uh, it's the cap from a. WBP Lynx pistol. Anyway, I uh, machined it down or had it machined down by our gunsmith and then made it a unit with the flash rider and then just screwed them all on. So that gives me the 14 inch barrel. Again, it's another lightweight profile. Interestingly, the original 805A1 barrel, 14 inch, is slightly lighter, but just a little bit, than the 16 inch US barrel. More telling, it's threaded 14 by 1 left hand, whereas the US barrel that originally came on this was threaded half by 28. Anyway, back here we have the you know standard handguard. I never installed the side rails because all I would do is add rail, rail panels. And I like kind of the divot style here. And see, it has the iron sights that it came with. And I have the Primary arms, one of the enhanced ones with the digital controls. Jay picked it up for me years ago. Of course, it has the standard stock on here. I don't have the cheek riser on it, but uh, it's in the thing. And of course, I have the check magwell in mine. So, this gun, along with the light sling that's on it, weighs between eight and a half and eight and three quarters pounds depending on exactly what I have on it and how my scale is feeling that day it seems like it kind of fluctuates a little bit but uh, yeah I think part of it was going to the barrel if I remember correctly when I went from the 16 it took it from 812 to about eight 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 nine anyway eight and a half maybe a little bit more fully kitted out and like I said this here gun is seven and a half naked with just a polymer mag in it. It is one pound lighter. That's not kitted out though. My gun here, when it was new, was 16 inch barrel, but no optic or anything on the rails yet, just the iron sights, weighed right over eight pounds. You know, right floating around that area. So my point is quite simple. The 805 carbine was 8 pounds and people complained that it was way too heavy. The Bren 2MS carbine is 7.5 pounds and I haven't heard many people talking about it. Furthermore, as I've said, the balance point. One reason I never found the 805 terribly weighty 
was that it balanced as well. Not quite as far back as the Bryn 2, but because it's a metal, although lightweight alloy, with lightning cuts again, receiver, and a metal handguard, and a lightweight barrel, it balances kind of towards the front of the magwell, rear of the handguard. Whereas again, the Bryn 2MS carbine balances kind of mid handguard. For me, anyway. Your mileage may vary. So while I think the 805 is still slightly heavier, I actually think it's a better balanced and it feels better thought out. And above all, it is more military. And that's one thing to keep in mind as I conclude this video. I'm primarily interested in history. I do enjoy shooting, but obviously because I'm blind, I can't shoot for accuracy or range. So I mostly care when it comes to shooting about reliability, ergonomics, and just enjoyment in general. On the collecting side, I care about which guns are more historically correct. And while the Bryn 2, A1 and A2, are entering check service and have been for upwards of four years now, the 805, A1 and A2, are still in the Czech military with somewhere between 17 and 20,000 units. So they're not going to just retire them. And it's a good gun. It's not like it has an endemic problem. It just needed a few tweaks. And even just as it stands, the Bryn 805 S1 Carbine is quite close to the military. And you can do a few more things to really get it to where it needs to be, including putting the 14 inch barrel, putting the mag well, and of course it already comes with the right stock and sights. You could also refinish it to give it more of that Czech military color if you want, and you can install the side panels if you want, but you know, I'm not a 100% absolute purist. 90% maybe. The foregrip's from BNT, by the way, so good quality foregrip if not correct. Whereas the Bryn 2 MS Carbine is clearly not targeted at military buffs. While you could, I'm assuming this barrel is still quick removable, maybe put on a correct 14 or 11 inch military barrel, finding one plus the handguard to go with it could be difficult. On top of that, even if you did that, the lightning cuts, there's just, there's really no way you can add these to the receiver effectively. It's never going to have it. Notice the 805's always had them. And again, the, the 2's, 2S's two had them. It's a small thing, but it's sure a nice thing to have, and they do serve as practical purpose of cutting out weight. Hence the name lightning cut. This is targeted at target shooters, match shooters, what have you, is a modern sporting gun. And for that, with the exception of the 2K plus price tag, it's actually quite well suited. We have a folding and adjustable stock. That's nice. We have a pistol grip. Now you can't put an AR grip on here, it's part of the housing, but it does have interchangeable back straps. It also has a small storage compartment. Nice. The triggers on these are nice. I'd say under 5 pounds as a rule. I, I would still say that the 805, because it's metal, a little bit nicer. On the other hand, it's a pretty narrow, flat trigger. This is much wider and ribbed, so I think the physical trigger is more comfortable on the Bryn 2, but the pull is nicer on the 805. It's very lefty friendly with ambi controls and a brass deflector. These take AR-15 mags and they don't seem to be mag sensitive. You get a lot of M-lock real estate. You do have an adjustable gas system with three positions even if they're slightly different from the pistol. And for a shooter, this muzzle brake is quite effective at making recoil zero.
even on an 11 inch barrel it's very effective so on a 16 it's very effective also this is a high quality barrel chrome lined 1 and 7 twist I presume cold hammer forge but I don't know that for sure and the extra heavy weight is going to keep it from heating up as quickly which is going to lead to more consistent groups and sometimes target shooters just like having heavier barrels it's a good I don't know they do now Jay has had some very good accuracy results with his Bren 2 MS 11 inch pistol so that's good, nice but yeah this is definitely not targeted the military person or even the the more running gun tactical shooter or even the home defense this because of the added length and weight and lack of provided accessories this is more of a sport gun and it seems to be the direction CZ has been going for a while. If you look at their CZ-75s, they don't push so much the military ones, they push more of the sport competition ones. They discontinued their branding of the VZ-58 quite quickly. And even if you look at the EVO-3, the original pistols were very similar to the submachine gun, but as you get into the carbines, they get further and further away. CZ seems to be wanting to be a sporting arms company they're also very 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 aware and sticklers for 922R a lot more so than even companies like Arsenal and Century trust me so with that what are my intentions now the 805 was first released as a semi-auto in America in 2015, but it was designed expressly for the Czech military. And CZ hoped to get other customers, but they had been courting the Czech military really for two decades, finally getting adoption between 2009 and 2011. And the first version we got was, of course, the pistol with the 11-inch barrel. And it was very, very similar to the military gun with the correct threading on the barrel. It just didn't have a buttstock. It came with an end plate. And it came with the optional AR-15 magwell. But you could get, you know, the, you could put the original Czech magwell on. I don't blame them for that change. Totally logical for the US market. It also came with iron sights but they were the pistol sights from the Scorpion. A bit of an odd choice but and while they weren't military they're very good sights. It also didn't have the side rail panels but you could add them. And it also did not have the birdcage flash hider rather it had the brake like you saw on the two carbine but since it was still threaded to 14 by one you could get one and install it which is what I did back then. But a lot of people didn't like the brace, so the carbine came out, which gave you the military folding stock. There's actually two versions of this stock, but as far as I know, the U.S. guns only had the newer version here. And people love the Bren for being very smooth, very nice trigger, very accurate for what it was. Reliables all get out. And while the price tag for the carbine of MSRP of two grand was not cheap, it was still a thousand bucks cheaper than the competition, which was the FN SCAR. But they had complaints. Some, I think, were a little nitpicky. Some maybe less so. For example, people didn't like the reciprocating charging handle. Fair enough, but although, you know, the SCAR has it too. It does have a last round bolt hold open, and it even has a manual hold open on the side, but no release control. This was kind of simulating or um, aping the VZ58's control style. So some people didn't like that. I, I get it, but it wasn't a deal breaker. There and again, Jay and I are very used to AKs, though. 
probably, if you had to complain, the one that I would agree with the most was the bolt was not easily disassemblable in the field by the user. Could you disassemble it with tools? Yes. But you, it wasn't as intuitive as it could have been. Now this was something actually CZ did originally to help try to soldier proof it. Same reason they put a cross pin between the magwell unit and the trigger unit in their military guns. Originally they didn't have it. That's one thing the Czech military requested. So they added it, and we, it came on our semi-autos too. But I never reinstalled it in mine. I'm putting the well on so I can go back and forth easily. So I, I get that. And of course, again, as I've said, and most people say, the number one complaint you hear is the weight, the weight, the weight. Good grief, you'd think it was a 10, 12-pound gun. It's a little bit heavier than some ARs, but not others. And actually, if you look at the SCAR with the same length barrel, be it either 14 or 16, it's not that much heavier than a SCAR. It is a little bit, I grant you, but not a huge amount. But on the flip side, this is a metal receiver gun, not polymer. Keep that in mind. And it's a gas piston. And if you want to talk about weight, pick up an HK MR556. Somehow, people don't really complain about the weight of those. And they're heavier than a Bryn. Well, that would lead to the Bryn 2. Both for military use. They started working on the Bryn 2 in 2015. And the first ones were tested, early prototypes, in 2016. And then an initial military order was placed. It was hoped to kind of address some of the issues, weight being the number one thing. Hence, they went to a new handguard system and really just did a lot of, really mostly, yeah, it's handguard, if you think about it. That's the main weight savings for the Bryn 2 is how the gas system, handguard, and barrel system are all arranged. They also did some more lightning cuts on various components. But yeah. They also made the bolt in user disassemblable. They made the lower a single piece. Now it just takes AR-15 mags, not the proprietary Bryn mags. But they did make a magwell insert system where you could use 760 by 39 mags. And, well, it didn't need an improvement for accuracy or reliability, so they didn't really do a lot there. They did make it a little more compatible. Again, M-Lock, having QD sling sockets things of that nature and they also went from the old 14 by 1 left hand thread to the modern half by 28 and made the gas system a little more intuitive to take apart I would say along with the bolt made the controls a little more friendly and they of course now introduced and a, a bolt release actually in the trigger guard as well as other places it and yeah they really went all out to give you that their bolt release. And again they went to the polymer trigger which has pros and cons but overall I'd say is probably with the exception of having not quite as nice of a pull nice. And so they first released very quietly the Bren 2 S as a pistol only here but they did all three barrel links and both calibers so six different variants and what would that have been uh, September of 2018 help me out guys it's been it's been yeah it's been a couple of coming up on a couple of years but that was kind of a soft release it seems like they, they had full ATF approval and the first batch of kind of pre-productions were sent over but then CZ USA was pushing for an Americanized version known as the Bryn 2 M S they felt this would be a better version for the American market than the 2S. And with that, also in 2018, they would discontinue the 805, both the PS1 pistol and the S1 carbine. Although these are still very much in Czech military service today. But yeah, the Bryn 2 became the new hotness. Again, the 2MS started off as a pistol, very similar to the 2S appearing last year. So what did they do and did they make it better for the American market? In my opinion, 
Although I think I have some objective facts. No, I think the 2 MS was a step backwards. Let me explain. Now, we have done a comparison, 2S versus 2MS, so check that out for really up close as far as pistols. They didn't add any features, but as I said, they took the lightning cuts out of the 2MS receiver, thus making it slightly heavier. And they went to the swoopy, curvy pick rail, which is only a cosmetic thing, but I prefer the standard straight top rail of the 2S, and everyone I've talked to, and I do mean everyone, says the same. But I can live with that. It's a rail. The odd part, the 2S, and these always had a modular handguard because of the removable barrel. But anyway, the 2MS, I mean, the 2S, excuse me, has two M-lock slots. On each side, plus two on the bottom, plus the pick rail. The 2MS has a more curvy handguard with only one M lock slot per side and bottom. Why? It also has more screws, which I guess is supposed to make it more modular. I don't get that. So, while well, you can say that the lightning cut removal in the top may be cosmetic choices, the switch from this style of handguard to the MS style functionally is a step backwards. I don't know how you could argue otherwise. Other than that, the two MS pistols had the same flash hider here, came in the same barrel lengths in the 14 inch, two MS. In 5.56 NATO, even still had the bayonet lug. They also still came with the iron sights. So not bad. And they came with this same adapter plate. Now, I will say the 805 just came with an end plate. If you wanted to put an arm brace on it, you had to buy an extra part. The 2S and 2MS both have always come from CZ with an adapter already where you can just screw on any compatible buffer tube system including doing a folder like I've done here using that. Nice little touch and about a hundred dollar value if not a little less. Plus you get the sights. But people have really been wanting the carbine. Now I had concerns about how you would make a 16 inch barrel gun look good with the two version. Now this is the 11 as I've said. Notice how it, it sticks out a tasteful amount from the front. But if you look at the 2S and 2MS with a 14 inch barrel, they stick out, well, three inches longer. So you have a lot of exposed barrel. Luckily you do have the bayonet lug in the middle that kind of breaks it up, but it is out there a bit. It looks a little odd. That was one of the many reasons I ended up going with the 11 inch. It just looks proportionally right, even to a blind guy. So how would they do this? Would they just extend it out two additional inches? Well, no. And we kind of knew early on they were going to go to a slightly longer gas system. And I was concerned, because I knew even if they kept the lightweight barrel. Going to a longer handguard and longer gas was going to add more weight. Which it did. And then they doubled down by going to a heavy profile barrel. And then adding a slightly heavier and longer muzzle device. Long story short, this is a lot longer in the front and does not look like a military gun as I've said in the front. The back is the same, AR mags, piece, you know, things. No sights, which I think is a ripoff, frankly. But it does have the stock, which is a checkmade stock and the single most desirable piece on the carbine. Nothing else about this gun is better 
to me than the 2S. I think when they went from the 805 to the Bryn 2 overall, they made an improvement. And I think when they went from the 2S to the 2MS, they made a deprovement. <laughs> and now with this 2MS carbon, they further deproved the gun. Not only does it weigh nearly as much as the 805 carbon again, it loses most of its military elements. Very little of the military Bryn 2 is left except for the lower and the buttstock. Receiver, top rail, handguard, barrel, muzzle brake, gas system, gas valve. These are all clearly commercial parts. Whereas you look at the 805 and the 2S, it's not. I mean, with the exception of a few things, it looks like what the Czech military have been issuing. By the way, and I've said this in several videos, they issue the Bryn 2A1 with 14-inch barrel and the Bryn 2A2 with 11-inch barrel. I have not found any evidence of the Czech military issuing the 8-barrel submachine gun size version. That's not to say they don't, I just haven't found any evidence yet. So, me, myself, and I, I am disappointed. I was already a little disappointed with the 2MS. But that's nothing compared to how I feel about the 2MS carbine. Every decision they've made here, I fundamentally do not agree with and do not care for. And it kind of pains me to say that, because I will say this, CZ, when you call them, the folks that answer the phone, for one thing, they know their product, they can talk about it. They're usually very cheerful. And the most helpful and going out of their way people in the gun industry that I've met, two times this year I've called them about something, and not only did I get a quick and easy answer with a friendly attitude, they which were two different salespeople, went literally well above and beyond, voluntarily, not me even asking, to help me out. And that's why I actually have the 14-inch uh, barrel for my 805. And on top of that, the reason I have the Bren 2S is thanks to Military Arms Channel. So the community has been really great with these guns. Uh, the, the Bryn 2S, I've told the story, but it's kind of funny. A customer or a client or just someone might ask me when these dropped that day if I knew about them, and I hadn't. So I called the Military Arms Channel and asked Tim, and he said he didn't really know about them either, and he was leaving for a trip over there that, that week anyway. And he first said, yeah, they're kind of high because this, this is when, back when Prepper had them. Why pay retail? Wait for the dealer. I said, I agree. I just wanted to let you know. He said thanks. Wished him a good trip. Thought, okay, I'll grab one next year when they become more available. It wasn't long before he called me back saying, get this one. He, and I said, why? And he goes, that's the closest we're going to get to the military. I said, well, what about the 2MS? He said, it won't be as close. How's that? I don't know. That's just what my people are saying. And, I said, and he said he'd already ordered one. So I ordered Jay and I first uh, an 8-incher, then two 11s, and then a couple of 14s from Prepper when they came in. And boy, that was very good advice. And I don't mind having to have paid full retail in this instance because this gun, even two years later, tickles me to death. And... Uh, military arms channel was a real pal there i mean we're a very small channel insignificant and that's just the kind of people that work over there they're just they're very helpful like that so i have great feelings surrounding the bren and the bren too so with that what am i going to do drum roll so this is what we're doing Putting the stock on my formerly pistol. Now, I was going to 
put on like an XM177 style flash rider. But those are five and a half inches, meaning putting it on an 11 inch barrel, it was not quite producing enough length. So I just grabbed a tube that was threaded. This is an MFI. I keep these around quite frequently and reuse them. Um, it's, you know, way long right now, but put a little dot of weld on just for a thing because, and this is going to make some in the comments rather happy. I filed for SBR paperwork. And since Form 1s are only taking a few weeks right now with e-filing, it's going to be the most temporary of temporary additions. So I really don't care. But I did want to put it on... Yeah, sight. Come on these lock in the up position. I have a pretty stiff spring. There we go. Burp. I did want to make sure the stock would fit. My gun, you know, tolerances. And it fits very well. And installs very easily, just as you'd expect. I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's also a very strong spring on the stock here. There we go. And locks on to the deflector just as it should. And what's nice about this stock, it'll actually lock on no matter which of the four positions you have your stock extended to. A lot of extended folding stocks won't necessarily do that. So yeah, some of you that have been on the SBR thing for me should be happy. And the reason I decided to do it, this is a keeper gun. I don't foresee myself selling it in the near future. I also really don't want to do a 14 inch. I really like the 11. But if you aren't in a state where SBRs are possible, you can do the 14 inch and pin and weld the flash rider on. I think even then it may be just a quarter inch too short, so be careful. You might need to get like a, a very thick lock washer or spacer but that would look pretty good I mean kind of like my uh, 805 carbine it's got a little spacer in it but it's all right so that's another option if you can't or don't want to do an SBR I would get the 14 inch pistol and uh, and pin that on and then swap out the, uh, the stock some people don't like the end plate because of its looks. Other people don't like it that it is a little rattly. It's not, and that really bugged me that bad, much, but it is a thing to notice. The stock fits much tighter. I noticed when the stock is fully collapsed, there's a little bit of play in the butt plate, but when it's fully extended, there really isn't. So yeah, whenever that gets back, I can pop the weld with my Dremel and unscrew the doofy extension and put my flash rider back on and going about my life so that's my plans and this is pretty much going to be my ultimate Bryn 2 semi-auto what a fun gun so where does that leave the carbon and of course the original CZ end piece is now on the carbine and since this is a carbine, just slipped on a Magpul buttstock, but of course any standard stock would fit. The folding mechanism still, of course, will work. If it still stays to the side. At least with the stocks further in, it doesn't block your ejection port. And so this will be how I sell this. Now I'll be honest about it. I will take 
a good chunk off the price and I would not normally steal a component off a new gun. Luckily, this one is actually pre-owned but unfired. Guy sent it to us and then he decided he needed to cover some medical stuff more than he needed to bring to MS Carbine, so putting it up. In magnitude is like this. The 2MS Carbine's best feature was its stock. And it otherwise looks pretty funky up front. The 2S pistol looked good until you got to the... Uh, sorry, I guess trying to push the button here. This is tight. There we go. Maybe. It's hard to do things one-handed. <laughs> the 2MS, or the 2S pistols look great in the front. But then they have the extension, the tube, and all that in the back, which kind of kills them. So I've taken two guns that have kind of goods and bads. And since the 2MS carbine is not military anyway, I don't think having this stock on it really hurts. It kind of jives better with the new handguard and what have you. And actually, because this is slightly heavier in the back, while this is even an out heavier gun, because the weight is in the rear, it does improve the balance a wee bit. So I'm going to have my Rin 2 replica, and as a shooter, this will still be a great gun for someone. Brand new bore, reliable, durable, very accurate and ready to be modulized and customized. And they can always put a stop back on it if they wish. So yeah, box, all that. That's what I was gonna do. Before this came in, I wasn't sure. I thought about just keeping a carbine, but I'm just not happy with the changes they made. I'd rather SBR my pistol, so. We'll probably do a little update, either on my personal channel over here when the paperwork comes in and the engravings done on that but uh, I know others have already done coverage of this so I wanted to kind of give my perspective feel free to disagree I know at least a good chunk of this was opinion oriented but that's okay but I think objectively I just don't there are plenty of guns that have long handguards and that are sub MOA. That are just accuracy guns and accessory guns. Not every gun has to be a one MOA gun. And not every gun has to be accessorized to, to hell and back. Some guns are nice being slim and trim. And with that, two MOA is plenty acceptable. The Tavor X95 comes to mind there, but I digress. I just feel like with this 2MS, they're trying to turn it into an AR-15 or something equivalent. But at least I am glad they released the 2S first for us military collectors. Now, if only SIG USA had done the same with the SIG 556 when it was released over a decade ago. <laughs> if they'd first released a authentic military version and then gone for the US version. I sincerely wish CZ luck with this. I want to see them succeed. And I hope they know something I don't, and that going this direction will net themselves. Because from my perspective, sticking to more of a military style would have been the way to go. But again, maybe they have studies and know things that I do not. I can only speak to what I enjoy. So what do you think? What, what's your opinions on the 2S, 2MS pistol and 2MS carbine? Or even the 805? would be very curious to know from everyone else. Oh, I did discover one more thing when I was swapping the stocks on. With the 2S, because of its standard handguard, to put on, to remove the end cap, you just 
you know, do the back thing. On this, you just push the pin out, and on the other one, you just push the button. And then this hinges down, and it slides off. Because of this new style of handguard, this cannot hinge down quite far enough to let the end piece come off. So you actually have to push this front pin out. Just, you know, one more little thing showing how the military design is being uh, driven away from. But yeah. So any questions or comments, please do post them. Hope this was worth the wait to get an opinion on the carbine. And as always, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support us, go to the channel and check out our Patreon page. This is Misha, and also, on behalf of Jay, we will both catch you very soon. Check time.